Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the Indianapolis Arrows franchise. The Arrows are off to a 3-2 and two start to start season number four, and I think that we are in prime position to compete for a wild card spot this year. If everything goes well and comes together offensively, and our pitching rotation does what they're supposed to do. You guys pointed out in the comments section that I should probably only have one starter in that setup role or one pitcher in that setup role. So I'm actually going to move uh, both of them out and then decide who I want there uh, in that setup role later. I think it might be either uh, Reynaldo Lopez or Carl Edwards Jr. Reynaldo Lopez is definitely our best uh, reliever. So I'm probably going to end up putting him there. But Carl Edwards, I've always really liked. I've been a fan of his game for a long time. He might end up being there also. One other suggestion you guys, you know, gave me was that I should move Ray Gonzalez out of that two hole and move Ian Happ up because Ian Happ does hit for extra base hits. So if Keith Rice gets on, that could be an easy RBI opportunity. And I think that right now that's probably a good move. Ray Gonzalez, his power isn't that great right now. So he's basically just hitting a lot of singles. So I'm going to move him out of that two spot versus left. I'm going to keep him there, though, because he has excellent contact versus left. I think that's a pretty good attribute for him. So now we move on to the month of April as we start uh, this season and we play Houston for the first time at home. We played them in the opener as well. So we play them in pretty much like every other series has opened the season and we end up getting a win here in Jose Urquidy's second start versus his former team. So he went on the road, started, he came back home, started, and we get an eight nothing victory right there. And we're one game away from a sweep after we defeat them in the next game as well, seven to one. So you could just see what's happening here with this offense. We are producing runs. We are stringing together hits and the top five guys of our lineup are really, really hitting well. Paulo Reyes leads us in average so far. He's hitting 333. And we are top 15 in average and run scored, which is definitely a big step forward and probably the reason why we haven't really succeeded so far in this series. So now we return home to play the Toronto Blue Jays. I wanted to get a little bit of a different matchup here. And uh, full disclosure, my capture card did mess up right after the third inning. So we will just really get to highlight the first three innings of this game and kind of set the tone for the rest of the episode and show you guys how improved our offense is. Babe Miller will face Josver Zuleta, who is... A young pitcher for the Blue Jays, but has not been off to a good start. In one start, he got yanked after one and two thirds inning. And here is who Bay Miller will have to face. You know, the Blue Jays are kind of in a rebuild. They did not re sign um, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., he signed with the Rockies, remember? And he actually got a pretty cheap deal, to be honest. We probably could have went after him, but realistically, I wanted him to go to a big market team. That just did not happen. Ewan Bay comes up here in the top of the first inning. He will single to left field as Bay Miller gives up two base runners here at home. Bo Bichette to the plate. He hits one well to left center, and that one will get all the way to the wall. It will score one. It will score two, and Toronto is off to a good start today after they have been off to a pretty bad start to start the season, and it is 2-0 for the Blue Jays here on the road for them. Alejandro Kirk comes to the plate now, hits a slow roller to third base. Cam Collier comes up throwing, and that's an excellent throw to first for the easy out for the first out of the inning. Dalton Vershow comes to the plate. He hits one to center field. Ojo Tycon playing in center field. Will camp under that one. Good throw over to third base. Will hold up Bichette at second. As that brings up Seth Brown to the plate, hitting 120 on the season, and he checks his swing, and he goes around. It's a slider on the inside half as we move on to the bottom of the first. Keith Rice comes to the plate now. He is an excellent leadoff hitter for us because of that excellent speed and the ability to swipe bags, and he does get a single here to start out the bottom of the first. Ian Happ hitting in that new position in the lineup, number two, which he hasn't hit at all in this series, but he cannot hold up his swing, and the ump says he went around. Alex Verdugo, who is an excellent three-hitter for us this year. He hits one down the right field line. That gets all the way to the wall. Keith Rice will score from first, and it is a 2-1 to -one ball game. I said last episode I love what Verdugo has at the three spot, and then following that up with Paulo Reyes, those two back-to-back, -back, and then we add Salvador Perez to the lineup, who definitely adds 
some much more power. So now here comes Paulo Reyes. He hits one to left center. That one gets down, and it scores Verdugo, and it is 2-2 two to two just like that. Our offense is maybe our brightest spot of the team now. It used to be a huge weakness, and now it's a strength. Jack Sawinski hitting in that five spot today as we did get Sal give Salvador Perez the day off as he will fly out into short uh, center field. As that brings up Jim Hall, who is our top catching prospect in the organization. I'm not sure how long I will have him at the major league level. Like I said, I want to get another catcher in here to just uh, move up to the MLB roster and then allow Jim Hall to get some at-bats at AAA. I think that's what we're going to end up doing. Ronald Guzman comes to the plate here in the top of the second inning. He drives one to left center field. Not used to seeing this out of Bay Miller, and he's given up a few hits in the first two innings. So that's a leadoff double here for the Toronto Blue Jays, bringing up Gabriel Martinez, who swings and misses that time. He goes down on strikes, bringing up Josh Rojas with two outs, and he hits one well down the right field line in the Blue Jays. Their second straight inning with a run scored, and it is three to two off of the double from Rojas. And Babe Miller in unfamiliar territory right now. And we find ourselves down by one. Yuan Bay comes to the plate now. Ground ball th through the right side. Another hit given up by Bay Miller. A good throw home will hold the runner up at third. But now they have runners on the corners with their best hitter coming to the plate. It's Bo Bichette. He had a double here in the first inning, but this time he chops that one to first. Paulo Reyes steps on the bag, and we're down by one. Bottom two now. Here's Oijo Taikan. He looks absolutely ready this season. He hits one to the right center gap. He gets all the way to the wall. He's rounding second, headed to third, and he has a leadoff triple here in the bottom of the second inning. Oijo Taikan, remember, had a fast start to his MLB career. He got injured, which definitely hurt his development, and now he's back healthy here for season four. Ray Gonzalez, who is going to be probably the cornerstone piece of this organization. He was our first draft pick in season one and he singles up the middle. It's a 3-3 ball game now as that brings up Ian Happ, and he hits one well, and that one will move Ray Gonzalez over to second, and Ian Happ is on with a single as that brings up Alex Verdugo. One for one today. He gets a hanger on the inside half, maybe a bit out of the zone. He turns on it actually pretty well, but it's just a fly out to right field. Unfortunately, our capture card ended up messing up there, but we do actually end up losing that game 3-4. to four. And actually, what's funny about that is that that was the most offense you would see all game long. The rest of the game was actually pretty boring. We had some great pitches to hit. We just could not follow through with those at-bats. So here we take a pause at the MLB level to take a look at our top prospects. Jackie Cochran was our number one draft pick last year. We drafted him at number 10 overall and just actually number four overall, sorry. And just looking at the rest of the draft picks that we had in that draft, including Juan Rosario and Lee Gonzalez, both of them are at the double A level and they are very, very comparable, but five years apart actually. And then John Field, who is our highest potential prospect in the entire organization. He's got 95 potential. He's only 57 overall. He's also at double A. And then looking at, you know, the top prospects in baseball, Three of the top five are from our division. So the Wranglers have one, the Guardians have one, and the Twins have one. And then here we are. Our top prospect is Jackie Cochran at 34 in the MLB. And then also Terrell Blake, who is at number 44. I want to highlight Terrell Blake really quickly because he's off to an excellent start this season at AAA. 3-0 and in three starts, 23 innings pitched. He's given up 10 hits, a 1.57 ERA, and a .78 whip. I mean, goodness. Terrell Blake is on his way to being an excellent pitcher. I can't wait to see what he's going to be. I don't know if he's going to get moved up this year. I would imagine not, but if he keeps pitching like this, I mean, who knows? I mean, anything could happen if you're, you're dominant like that, but I do want to keep him down there as long as I can. But today I want to focus on Jackie Cochran, who assumes the number one top prospect in the organization, like you, like I just saw, uh, top 50 in MLB, and we'll see what he can do today. Here is his first at-bat facing Chad Patrick in the two-lane uh, minor league ball club, and that one will be a fly out uh, behind the plate. 
So that brings him up for a second at bat here. 0 for 1 today. He hits one well down the third base line. That one looks like it was bobbled by the third baseman, but they will actually rule this one a base hit. I'm not sure if I would have called that a base hit, but nonetheless, he gets his first single of the game, and that one actually loads up the bases here in the bottom of the third inning. The Northwest Arkansas Naturals end up getting one out of that inning. But here comes Jackie Cochran up for his third at bat, and he hits one well down the right field line, but it's snagged by the first baseman as he moves on to his fourth at bat of this game. Now up two to one are the uh, Naturals, and that will be ball four. So Jackie Cochran has got on base two of his four at bats in this one. And now he comes up for his final at bat here in the bottom of the eighth inning, up two to one with an opportunity to drive in a run from third base. He gets a pitch up in the zone, and that one he just got under. It's a fly ball to center. But the Arkansas Northwest Arkansas Naturals end up getting the victory in this one, two to one. And I like the swing that I see from uh, you know, Jackie Cochran. So we will actually, you know, focus on him once again in another game, this time versus Arkansas. And I want to see him in the field. Now, the thing about Jackie Cochran is that he does not have a great arm. He is not really particularly a great fielder. So I think that he's going to be a second baseman long term. I think that's where he's going to play. And I think that one thing that I do love about him is that he's got potential with the power at the plate. As we'll see his first at bat of today. Here he comes up here in the top of the fourth inning. Nobody on, no outs. He gets one low in the zone and hits this one deep to left field. That one is gone. Jackie Cochran's first ML, I guess, a minor league home run will be a 394 foot shot to left field, and we get to see it live. And it makes it a three to one ball game here on the road, but still, we get a nice at bat here from our top prospect in Jackie Cochran. And you can just see he has great potential with that bat. I think that's going to be his biggest asset. And he's only 18 years old, which is going to be really, really good in his development because we have a few years. We don't have to rush him up or anything. Top five now. Bases loaded situation. One out here as he gets a pitch over the middle of the plate. This one's driven deep. Will it stay fair? It does. A grand slam home run here for Jackie Cochran. Two home runs here in this one, and he will give the Naturals the lead. Jackie Cochran has just such a natural swing to me. We had, ended up actually shaving his face, as you see. He's just 18 years old. He goes deep. He was struggling at the plate here before we took over in this episode, hitting only 194 before this at-bat, and he goes deep. And that makes it a 6-5 to five ball game. Top seven now. Can he go deep three times in this one? But this it will be a fly out to right field. He does go two for four up to that at bat. And let's see if we'll get one more here. And we do here in the top of the eighth inning. Another bases loaded situation. He gets one on the outside half. Just a bit early with that swing. Cannot come through. But the Northwest Arkansas Naturals end up getting the victory in this game. Jackie Cochran gets player of the game. He goes deep twice. Five RBI game. How about the start to his career? Obviously, the average is low. I don't expect that to, you know, stay that low. We end up winning this one 10 to 5. So we tack on four more runs in the ninth inning. 12 hits we got in this one. Arkansas got 15. So that's <laughs> just a crazy outing. Roger Sting, who was a top 50 prospect in baseball last year, gave up 12 hits for the Naturals in that game. So we will go back to the MLB level, and I talked about the offense earlier, but maybe the pitching is the strength. Jose Arquiti and Jordan Montgomery both have below a one whip. Tafon Edwards is undefeated on the mound. His ERA is at 2.25, which is actually very, very good. Bay Miller is the one struggling in the rotation, a 6.05 ERA. But then Todd Workman, if you have a number five in your uh, rotation pitching like he is, a 2.25 ERA, a 1.15 whip. We are looking very, very good all around. So today I want to focus on Jose Urquidy, who will face the Minnesota Twins, and Johnny Ewing, who was the number one rated prospect in season number one. He went to the Twins. 
and they are seven and nine to start this season and this is the first series we will face a divisional opponent here in season number four so i'm interested to see how we will do versus them and today we will most mostly focus on jose urquidy who was one of our big signings in the free agency uh in the offseason jose urquidy and salvador perez we will get to see both of them today i want to focus on our two big signings in free agency today so we'll see in his fourth start he is 2-0 undefeated he gets to face one of his former teammates in carlos correa still with the twins so we'll see what happens is Byron Buxton hitting in that four spot, only 254. Austin Martin is hitting 390 to start this year. And Ewing leads off this game. So here we go here in the bottom of the first inning as we focus on Urquidy here facing Johnny Ewing out of UCLA, if you remember that. He, he played in the national championship and ended up getting a ring. As now we get it to a 1-2 count, Ewing fouls off a bunch of pitches. And now the sixth pitch of the at-bat will be a fastball up and in. And Ewing does wave at that one. And the first strikeout of the game comes off of the leadoff batter. Austin Martin comes to the plate now. He hits one well down the left field line. That one gets all the way to the corner there. Coming up throwing is Keith Rice, but he doesn't have the greatest arm in left field. And it will be a double for Austin Martin, who's off to an excellent start this season. Carlos Correa faces his teammate for the first time here in this one. This will be a fly out to left field. As Keith Rice will be under that one as it brings up Byron Buxton hitting 254. A low slider will be ball four. So that brings up Nick Gordon hitting 269 on the season. Jose Arquiti gets him to ground out to first base. And Paulo Reyes steps on the bag. So bottom two now. Jose Miranda comes to the plate now. Hitting 312 on the season. Ground ball up the middle. And Ray Gonzalez cannot handle that one. And it should be a word and error, but they're actually going to call this one a base hit. Interesting call right there, but now they have a man on first base here with no outs. Ground ball up the middle. That one gets through the infield, so that one looks like a legit hit. And now they have men on first and second here with no outs. Kike Hernandez comes to the plate now. He hits one down the left field line. Look at Keith Rice. The jump that he gets on this one, he's got the speed in left field. That's one thing I like about him. Even though he's a below average fielder, his speed allows him to get to a lot of balls. Harry Ford comes to the plate now. He is going to go down looking. Good location on that fastball will freeze him at the plate. And that brings up Johnny Ewing, a 2-2 pitch up in the zone. This one's hit to right field, but it's just a fly ball too. Alex Verdugo in right field, and Jose Urquidy gets out of that jam after giving up two base runners to start the inning. Top four now, and this is Ojo Taikan at the plate, who has been hitting the ball particularly well, dating back to last season. That one will be a double here in the fourth inning. Ojo Taikan is interesting. You know, he got off to a terrible start to start last year after coming off of an injury. Could not get right at the MLB level. Went down to AAA. Led the AAA in average during the second half of the season. And now he's back at the MLB level, hitting the ball great. And he gives us a 2-0 lead here going into the fourth inning. Jose Urquidy facing the middle of this lineup. Nick Gordon starts out the fourth inning with a single down the left field line. Jose Miranda to the play. One for one today. Oh, and that one's going to be mishandled by Gonzalez again. That's the second straight time a ground ball from Miranda bounces off of Ray Gonzalez's glove, and it should have been a double play. And now they have a man in scoring position here with Nick Gordon on second. That's going to bring up Larnick to the plate, and he does swing and miss at that one. And Jose Arquiti faces Enrique Hernandez, who hits one hard to second base, and we will get out of this inning with no damage done. Now to focus on the other big free agent signing, Salvador Perez, who signed a two-year, $30 million deal with the Indianapolis Arrows. He gets one over the middle of the plate. This one's driven deep, and it's gone. That makes it a 5 to nothing game. The funny thing about that home run is it is versus the guy that we decided to kind of pass up on in free agency in Nestor Cortez. Remember, we offered him a contract. We rescinded it because we wanted to go after Salvador Perez and both Jose Urquidy, and we ended up saving some money, and it looks like we had the last laugh right there. So that will be the last at-bat we see from Nestor Cortez in this one. He gives up five earned runs, 
as Jose Arquiti is still rolling on the mound. This time, Johnny Ewing will swing and miss, and he's getting through that top of the lineup pretty well today, bringing up Austin Martin, one for two today. Ground ball to short, and that one should be a legit base hit. It knocked off of the glove of Ray Gonzalez. He's getting put to work quite a bit there at short today. As that brings up Carlos Correa, a high and in tight fastball, and Correa cannot keep up. And now with two outs, Jose Arquiti can get out of yet another jam. He gets Byron Buxton to fly out to center field. Fred Scott, the rookie out of Alabama, will be under that one. And Arquiti is pitching well today here on the road. On to the top of the sixth inning. Here is Ojo Taikan, who is just hitting the cover off the ball to start the season. That was a perfect, perfect single right up the middle. And Ojo Taikan is really, really impressing me so far this season. As that brings up Brandon Crawford as we give uh, Cam Collier the day off at third. But he just hits a ground ball to second base, a double play here for the Twins. Bottom six now, Jose Arquiti still pitching great. He gets a ground ball to first base with a man on first, and that one will be a double play. That will be the last of Urquidy in this one. He was over 100 pitches at that point, but Urquidy with a great outing here and getting these big division wins and getting some great outings from our starters is going to be key. He does give up seven hits, but nonetheless, they're never strung together. He maybe gave up two at the most strung, but besides that, not really too much. Salvador Perez comes up in the top of the seventh inning, and he gets one to hit again. That's going to be driven to the tr third deck there in left field. That's gone. A triple-decker shot here for Salvi, and it makes it a 7 to nothing ball game. That's a way to set the tone within the division, to be honest with you. We have been probably the last or second-to-last team in this division the last three seasons and it looks like things could be changing. Fred Scott comes to the plate now in the ninth inning, and that's the rookie out of Alabama. He hits one to right center. He's got excellent speed, even with Byron Buxton's strong arm coming from center field. He still makes it to second, and that will be a one-out double. Paulo Reyes comes to the plate now. He hits one hard up the middle. That one actually knocks off of the pitcher's back, Sir Anthony Dominguez. And he's going to be a little bit sore, but he will actually remain in the game after taking a shot right there. As that brings up Alex Verdugo hitting in that five spot versus lefties. As he faces Dominguez now, he gets one inside, and he will swing and miss. But we have a setup here in the ninth inning, a 7-1 to cushion. And Victor Gonzalez comes into this game. A Rule 5 draft pick back in season number two. And we will get the victory here. And wow, the arrows just look different this year. We get the victory. We're stringing together hits. We're going deep. And we're pitching great. Everything's rolling so far to start this season. We're almost 20 games into the season, and you can just see the potential we have. I feel like we're, we are giving up a little too many hits. We gave up 10 in this one. They only scored one run off of it, but, you know, we got 14 hits, and we scored seven. Salvador Perez goes deep twice, four RBIs. Ian Happ actually went deep as well. He was three for five as well. And then Oye Joe Tycon continues to hit the ball well. I'm going to keep him at the bottom of the lineup because I want to keep a hot bat down there along with Jack Sawinski also. He's swinging the bat pretty well to start the season. But we start out 11-8. and eight. We do drop two or three in that series from the Twins, so our division record starts out at one and two. But I think it's a good start to this season. Like, we are hitting the ball well, 276. We have a 3-2-5 ERA. The Wranglers are 10-9. and nine. Also, they are doing pretty well. So we will actually get to the month of May next episode. I plan on getting through April pretty much simming. And then I want to start playing some divisional games. So we'll play Cleveland at home, Minnesota at home, and then Oklahoma City on the road. So I want to focus on those three games or those three matchups here next episode. Getting through you know the month of April where we play a couple of NL teams and a couple of AL East teams also. So that's going to do it here, and I hope you guys enjoy this team. And This is gonna be this season is going to be the most fun, I think, because we get to see the most gameplay. We are the most competitive. Let me know what you guys think of the squad. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. It's too easy. I've been there, done it, seen it. Boy, all that like Kenan. Still got crack, they feeling. Flow still hot like Phoenix.
Shine so bright, I'm gleaming. This off top, I'm tweaking. Fresh out the rat like Nina. And I'm still trying to fight my demons. Cause we all gotta act like Tina. That's why I gotta ride with the Nina. Outside, it's a war going on.